Hey, I'm Lee Keller. I'm Kim Cavanaugh. And we're right back at Computers for the Completely Clueless. We're going to finish up a little bit of talking about a real basic word processor called WordPad. Right, and it's a good way to get your feet wet and get a good, you know, basic understanding of how to do word processing. And we'll, as the show goes on, we'll, we'll take a look at more advanced yeah. word processors as we go along. But okay. Lee, when we broke, it's a good thing the power didn't go off here in the studio because we forgot to do something very, very important. I have to save often. And you know, there's three ways to do a save. Right. Some of them are real quick and fast. Mm -hmm. The slowest way would probably be to wander up here and click on File and go down to Save. Right. But you see over here? I see. There's that keyboard shortcut again. Yep. Control S will save, just like that. And I think there's something so ingrained in my brain now, but if I'm working on a document about every five minutes, I just hit those two keyboard yeah, shortcuts. It's, and, and, it's right there. It's right there, right next to each other. Very easy. Control S. Now remember, what does Save do? It keeps the same name, the same location, the same file formatting right. as the current document. Yeah. And I have a little rule for myself. When I, if I'm working on the keyboard, Control S is how I do it because my hands are on the keyboard. Right. But if I'm using the mouse already, right. they give you this nice, convenient little picture of a disc. Ah, floppy who, disk. Who uses I a remember floppy those. Disk anymore. I just think I put a box of those in my in my shed the other day because it's been forever since and, I used one. And they'll melt there. And that's a good place <laughs> for them then. Yeah, okay, so I just click on that little icon and it's saved. Just no, like I, I don't see anything happen. Though. No, I mean, it's that fast. Oh, well, so how do I know it's really saved? Well, if I try to save again, it'll Nothing let me. Happens. You know, you can do it all you want. You can save over here. Okay. It just saves it. All right. Well, let's see. Let's see what happens. We talked about expectations before. Add a little couple of characters here. Okay. Just type in a couple of something. There we go. Okay. Now close the program. Yes. And if I try to close it, it says. Ah, ah. you made a change. Do you want to save before you quit? What's that the answer, Lee? Well, this time yeah, I want to. Actually, my answer is cancel, but. You would say yes if you're really quitting. Yeah, yeah. The, the computer always prompts you, and don't go past that screen so fast. I mean, stop and look because, you know, otherwise you may have been working on something, and if you don't save it when you close the program, yes. she's gone. It gives you a All right, big so here problem. we are back. We got our, got our basic. Now, let's talk about bullet points, okay. and uh, we'll do a little bit more on some basic formatting. If you want to make those three lines there, we want to create f bullet points out of those mm -hmm. lines. How would we do that? Well, it's pretty easy. It's Select. Easy. Select it first, right? Then come over here to this little button up there, or we could do this under Format. Okay. We click on that and Instant Bullets. Ah, I see. Now we got some lines that with bullet, where bullets where we don't want them. How do we take those away? Well, uh, click in that right. line. So click, uh, click in that line. I'm going to backspace. All right. And we'll click on that line, backspace, and. All right. And the other one thing to do, of course, if you have an extra line and there's a bullet, mm -hmm. you can just click on the bullet line up there. Uh, bullet button again, and the bullet is no longer there. Yes, yeah, so this is really like a toggle, turns it on and off. Yep, exactly right. So okay. well, there are some other things. Let's look at the format menu here for just a second, uh, because some of the things that you can do, for instance, bullet style. If you select that, um, it will let you change the style of bullets. Maybe you want a square bullet, or maybe you want something else like that. I think you'd probably have to in select In a more that. advanced word process. Yeah, and there's there's other things that you can do as well. Let's, uh, well... Let's see. So there you go. So it's got bullet style. That's I see. It. That's just a toggle. That's All the right. thing about WordPad. It's a very, very simple basic word program. processor. Okay, I got gotcha. you. No magic. Now, what if I wanted to take that block of text there and I want to bump it to the right? Is there a way to do that? Oh, you mean this one down here? Well, any of them. Okay, well, you could take that. And uh, actually, I, I'm not sure if this one will do it because it is a very simple uh, word processor. How about the tab key? The tab key? You know, I didn't even think of that. That's what I usually use. So I'm going to hit that right in front of it. And I hit the tab key, it goes over there. There you go. Hit it again, it goes again. Yeah, there you All go. All right, so you want to get rid of it? Press delete. Mm -hmm. okay. So relatively easy, right? Not a hard thing to do. So if I can go over here and I can delete them. Right, and then you go back to that original line. So tab keys, uh, control S, um, and there are some insert options in WordPad mm -hmm. um, that we really don't have time to get into today. And it's pretty limited, so I, I think we don't want to... Uh, send people yeah, down the wrong trail. It's a good place to start. But this is a good assignment for everybody at home. Open up WordPad. You saw at the beginning of the show mm -hmm. how to make a shortcut. Create a shortcut and go in WordPad and, and spend a little bit of time yeah. formatting text. Make sure that you're comfortable with all those kind of things. How to change paragraphs. You can styles. do a lot of fun things with that. And you can. You it's can simple. make it a fun project and it's simple and it's a good way for you to build confidence 
uh, especially for adults, because sometimes we're a little bit nervous about our computers, build up a little confidence about how you format your text, and then you can graduate up into the, the more full-featured uh, word editors if that's what you choose to do. Now, we introduce some vocabulary during every one of our sets, and I think you've got an email there about I a do. really strange vocabulary word. All right, here's another great uh, email. And uh, we do have, by the way, do we have a new address for people to write? And we'll get that up on screen. Mm -hmm. It's palmbreezecafe.com slash questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, very easy. And uh, from Sydney in Boca. Sydney asks us this question. I hear people talking about something called defrag. What is defrag and should I be doing it? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, I don't know. It sounds vaguely oddly defrag. Uh, now, sometimes we, we thought about maybe fragging the camera crew, uh, <laughs> but that's not the same kind of thing. You can't no. really defrag when you throw a fragmentation yeah. grade. What happens is on your, your hard drive is as you delete files, you, you leave spaces in there. And what the hard drive does is when it saves the next file, it puts a little bit in this empty space and a little bit in that one. And before you know it, your programs or your, your document files are spread out all over the hard drive. So basically what you have is you have little fragments mm -hmm. of files that are spread out over this magnetic disk yeah. that's in your computer. And they're not organized very efficiently. And it takes longer for and them to load. it takes longer. Now, microseconds, but, you know, you, you, op, you, you multiply microseconds times all the processes yeah. that the computer has to do, then it can actually slow down your computer from booting up or even doing Absolutely. some basic operations. So when you defrag, what it does is a little program, it, it's going to go through your computer and it takes the little pieces and puts them together so each file is in one continuous format. Right. And it loads much faster. Okay, great. So should Sydney be doing this? Absolutely. I, I recommend it like once a month. Now, and, and here's a good question for you, because when, when I've done this before, it can sometimes take a long time to it do it. It can. I usually do it before I go to bed. Right. So you do it before you Let go to bed. Do you have overnight. time to show us how to do it? I don't know. If we can get a, up here quick, I can at least show you where it is. Okay. So we're going to go back here and just go down here to the Start menu and again to All Programs. Okay. We're going to go up here to Accessories. And this is under System. Okay. Actually, I don't see it under System, so <laughs> yeah, we always get a curveball in here, don't we? Yes, we do. And do you know I why thought... it's not here? Why? Because we're using a school district computer uh, and they've disabled that feature. All right, but I think we can get there from, um, from the Explorer menu or my computer. You want to actually go to your hard drive. That's what you're looking for. Is that's your C drive. That's that's the actual hard drive. So if you, I think if you right click on that, Lee, on the hard drives on the right okay. or left, either way. Okay. And it's gone. And uh, well, why would they leave? Uh, well, actually, go to properties. We're going to find our way. There we go. Tools under tools. There's our defragmentation. Okay, that was a okay. good shortcut. Long way to get there, but uh, basically you go to the you go to the hard drive itself, mm -hmm. and you look at the properties, and that gives you the tools yeah. that are available there. And there's the defragment okay. now, and uh, that's a good way. Yeah. And again, do it at night because sometimes it can take several hours. Okay, remember to send us your questions. Go to the address www.palmbreezecafe.com/questions, and we'll see you next week on Computers for the Completely Clueless. Okay, have a great week.